if you've been grinding and hustling out there in the street, writing all these policies, and you're trying to build residual income, and you built your income up to be $3,000 a month coming in, residual, before you get it by the bed, and God forbid, but you pass away, do you want that $3,000 to continue to go to your children, or would you rather it go back to the company? Every person says to my children. Yes. So why would you sign a contract that does not allow you to be vested? Welcome back to the CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. Today we got a special guest all the way from North Carolina. Has an amazing wife, Linda. Their company is First Gen Life. Has been in the business 27 years, by the way. Got a senior division up with Medicare and final expense and all that. And a wealth management division. And a crazy story. And seven steps that are going to blow your mind today. Please welcome, for the first time to the podcast, Mr. Eric Howard. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dude, Glad appreciate you. Yeah, man. Appreciate you being here. Excited for you to be here. Uh, you got a ton of experience. Man, also, like, I like your attitude and your personality and like who you are. Um, have you always been the same, this same dude I'm hanging out with the last few minutes? Is that, is this, is this, have you always been the same guy? Heck no, man. I've been crazier. <laughs> I've mellowed out a little bit. Okay. Uh, no, I, I haven't changed. I, I love, uh, I love having fun. I love life. I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored, you know? Yes. 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 Yeah. T talk about that life. Cause it wasn't always as good as it is now, you know? Yeah. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, you know, in, in this insurance industry, you're going to get that. And what's important to, to have is a, uh, a path to run, a, a system, if you would. Um, but I, I have been in the insurance industry 27 years. Uh, so I always tell people, regardless of what you're going through, I may have already been through it in, in most chances. Um, I know what it's like to, to walk outside and not see your car there because it got repossessed. Mm. Uh, I know what that feels like that happened in 2002. Um, I know what it feels like uh, in 2008. I was facing foreclosure. I uh, had wow. a beautiful home. Uh, what was it? 3,000, 3,500 square foot home and facing foreclosure with the, with the market crashing like it was. I was right in the midst of all that. What, what does that feel like? So you talked about the car being repossessed. What kind of car was it? Back then it was a Mitsubishi Galant. Okay. Right. I love that car. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you actually miss the car though? No. Okay. Not but, now. What, but, but it, it was a good car. Yeah. What What are you rolling in now? Um, I have a Denali. I just got it last year. Had okay. it built last year. Yeah. From a Galant yeah. to a Denali. That's definitely a step up. Yeah. I, like that. I went through the Mercedes. I went through the Cadillacs and uh, we have two boys, seven and six, and they are growing. They're in sports. They have their friends want to ride along and, and the car is just too small. So I had to, I, I bought my first truck ever. And now I'm going, how in the world did I live without a truck? Mm. That's crazy, mm. right? Yeah, it is crazy. I'll never have, do that again. Have people been asking you to help them move? No, actually, no. Dude, you're okay. You're lucky. That's great. Yeah. When yeah. I owned a truck, it was like, I heard that was everybody's, happened. you know, everybody's thing. Um, my phone's over here picking up everything I'm saying in a text message somehow. So I had to turn that off. Um, well, also a home being almost foreclosed. Like I think there's going to be agents that listen to this that can relate to your story and what you're talking about. They've been through tough times, et cetera. And if that's true for the, w when you all listen, let us know in comments below what you're thinking um, or your, even your experience and how you relate to Eric and, and how, you know, you like what he's talking about. Um, what does that feel like to be in a position where your home is extremely your, your house, your home, right, is extremely close to being foreclosed on. And what's what's going through your mind at that stage in life? The, the first thing was I'm not moving back home with my parents. That's the first important mm. thing. <laughs> you, mm. you start thinking things like that. What's going to happen? How's it going to be? Um, it's an embarrassment. Um, you, you, it's hard to eat. You're nervous. Um, I don't like the... Uh, what's the word? Um, the unknown, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was, I went to the uh, went to a company called NACA, and what they do is they help you with foreclosure processes and saving your home. Well, they said I needed to show two months' bank statements. 
to, to make sure they can I can withstand the loan modification, the the mortgage going to go up and things like that. Um, but I had basically two to three months to go to work and make something happen. And so I really just start focusing on activity and I prayed about it and God showed me a system to do. And I started working the system. Yeah. So you were actually, you were in insurance business during that. Yes. Yes. And it obviously wasn't going great. No, <laughs> and I was then, on my own. There was no training. That was none of those things. And, 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 and quite frankly, I didn't have the right products. You know, it was a lot of, you know, turning people down and I got into the final expense market and, you know, no turn down zero to 85 years old, that type of thing and getting paid fast. Um, you know, we get paid within 24 hours on, on most cases. Mm. Um, but you, you go back to how I felt. Um, it was really tough. It was a really tough time in my life. Um, and when you go to the courthouse and actually see your name plastered on the wall, you know, Eric Howard and foreclosure date and the address, it's, it really hits home, you know? Gosh, and, um, I still, to this day, I keep right here on my desk, right here in my credenza, uh, two pieces of paper in a frame uh, that shows the foreclosure process uh, and one of the documentation where I was sending in the bank statements to save my mortgage. Uh, I keep that as a reminder, you know, of why I grind, why I get up every day and go to work because I'll never face that again. Mm. Um, but it, it, I, I, form, I end up forming a system called the seven steps. Okay. And it was just a, it's an activity-based type of system, and it created a tremendous amount of wealth for me. Uh, and as I started hiring other agents into our agency, taught them the system, those that follow instructions, that worked hard at it, they doubled their income, if not tripled their income in their first year with us. Let's go. I love that, yeah. man. That's phenomenal. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and it's so much about, um, it's so much about systems. Yeah. And most people don't have them, but they don't talk about them because they don't have them. And then, you know, agents are running around trying to figure it out and they're all on their own, like you talked about, right? It, which, which you were at. Um, what does this look like? What can you share? You got me really intrigued by this system. This is cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> the seven steps, um, and I had a patent, by the way, because they made us so much money. I mean, smart. The, the thing is, when, when you get someone and you, t one of the things that we do when we bring on a new agent is we don't, we're not like your normal IMO where we just send out a contract and, you know, that's it. We actually take the time to uh, meet with them either face to face or on Zoom or something, get to know them, find out a little bit about them, what makes them tick, what's your goals, how much money do you need to make, how much you want to make, what's the most you ever made. Hmm. Let's focus on trying to double your income in your first year. Uh, we track 100 agents that actually doubled their income in their first year when they came with us, whether they was in nursing before or any insurance business with another agency. But we, we doubled their income in their first year and we tracked it. Um, but we, we focus on being the first generation to build and leave a legacy to the next generation. That's, That's what first generation life means. So if you follow a system, so the seven steps for the final expense, but now that we get into the Medicare division, we have what's called the Medicare seven. And hey, listen, I've had a few people go out there and do it, and they're on track to earn forty-five to fifty thousand dollars in a quarter. Mm. So with Medicare, we you know our system shows you how to do this year round, not just doing AEP season. Yeah. So it's it's that's it's crazy. modern, that's for sure. That's good, man. That's good. Um, and also, here's what I'm thinking, too. Like, this is a little unorthodox, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, if someone wants to reach out, say they want to text you or an email somebody or a phone number or a website or whatever, like, if they're already like, okay, I want to know what's going on with these seven steps. I'm super curious. I like this cat. Um, who should they reach out to and what should they do? They can reach out directly to me. They can, they can call me. They can call me at my office, my cell phone. Uh, we do have a, a great website to, to kind of go over all those things. I, I do not share everything about the seven steps um, until they are an agent with us. There's some other mentoring that I do where um, I do like a, a live Q&A session. And we're about to get that started again next That's month. Awesome. That's awesome. The live Q&A is mainly for agents that are uh, struggling, 
Um, I love new agents getting started because I don't know if you knew this or not, Cody, but 92% of agents fail in that first year. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. So, you know, we have the power to change that because it's a very lucrative business. And if we can share uh, systems, if we can share ideas and how to avoid the pitfalls in this industry, then we can decrease that 92%. And we've been doing that. And so one of the things I teach on the live Q&A is the five top reasons why agents fail in the industry. Mm. And one of them has to do with signing the wrong contract, not paying attention and what it means. You know, people, don't, they don't know what, what it means to be vested. And they spend a lot of time out there with companies and never building up residual for their family. True. And they didn't realize that. So it's a lot of tips that we that we give. And in, in this session, we're not trying to hire them. Right. True. Uh, they can stay right where they're at. But it's great to learn and understand what's really going on within the industry. So now they have a uh, they can go back to their their upline, their manager, their mentor to say, hey, I need to follow this way. I need you to help me this way. And yes. ultimately, they're going to double the income. That's so good. Okay, so so like uh, what number could they text if they wanted to? to uh, three, yeah, 336-512-3754. I love that the, you do the 336-512-3754. Uh, three, three, I love that you do the um, live Q&A and it's like, hey, dude, if you want to come learn and like get some information, we don't care where you use it. You know, obviously, we'd love to help you and work with you. And, you know, but like I like that you're willing to help people and like do it that way. Um, where, where does that piece come from? Do you think that's from, um, you know, from childhood or you just always want to help people or a parent or like where's some of that come from? I think so. Um, you know, my father, he's he's a big help in the community. Um, he, he was a building contractor. Um, my last name is Howard and where I'm from here in North Carolina, um, a lot of people know who the Howards are. When I mentioned Howard, they go, are you guys from this area? And I'm like, yeah, like, Oh my God, I love your family. And they start mentioning so many, you know, mm. ancestors. So, uh, I come from a long line of the Howard family. Um, and so we've always been known for helping people. Uh, it started with my grandfather. I heard all kind of stories how, you know, he wasn't very educated, but he was very smart when it came to the law. And yes. um, and he would go to court and, and fight for people. So if they couldn't afford an attorney, he went and, and fought in one cases. So <laughs> it's just I don't know. It's in my it's in my blood. It's in my system. Dude, I love that. And, and when you talk about first generation, um, like I, I give keynotes all the time. And one of the things I talk about is changing generations and how like you know when you're at a family reunion when you when you're gone and they're at a, and a family reunion is happening in 100 years and they're sitting around and they and your name comes up what are they going to say you know um what do you think they'll say about about you as an example and what do you want them what do you want them to say that's a good question um that there is a system in place to build in generational wealth mm. um i have seen agents you know, I, I've hit millions of dollars before, you know, in income in this industry. And I put a lot of money away and invested it properly. But I, I try to teach all of our agents as they come in that when you started earning this amount of money, you have to put money away. Yeah. You know, or how to organize themselves in terms of, you know, you have to live and have fun. Don't get me wrong. You, you got to take your trips. You got to, you know, but most importantly, you have to build generational wealth mm -hmm. because it's written somewhere. I read it. That's right. It says the last person leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That's right. Amen and to that. You got to do that. You have to be able to put it away. So <clears throat> we, we do things here at I, IMO that other companies don't do. Uh, we, we, we provide a lot of incentives. Uh, we do the trips. We do the rings and things like that. But more so... We have uh, we are in the process of implementing a process to where uh, instead of just giving you a trip or the rings and things like that, but we're going to also set up a bonus structure to where this money will automatically be invested somewhere. You are not these agents are not going to get it in hand for them to blow it, but we're going to force generational wealth here. Mm. So it's kind of like a like a four hundred one k if you would. So yeah. you know we're going to help people put money into an IUL, put money into an annuity. So as they're making money and hit six figures, their bonuses, in, in, instead of just getting it in cash, 
it's going to go toward their IUL or their annuity that they get to set up under their name and under their children's name. That's awesome. So that's yeah. what I want to be known for is that I help people build wealth. We create wealthy families here. Yeah, that's good, man. We create wealthy families here. That's good. That's a phenomenal tagline too. Uh, it's on my website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, dude, that's strong, man. I like that that's the case. Um, when you think about all the different products there are in the industry, why did y'all choose to focus on some of the ones that you focus on when there's so many options and agents? I, th I think a lot of agents come into business and they're like overwhelmed by the options and the different ways to make money. Well, we found, I mean, I came from final expense, you know, from 08 to now. Um, and then we started more in the wealth management because we did have agents that were already doing wealth management and that's all they wanted to do. Um, and I used to be with like one company doing one product for years. Mm. And then finally, when we broke away, became an IMO, you know, those people say, man, finally, now we can do what we need to do. Uh, but you, you, you have to be able to have the best of both worlds. You have the final expense, which is 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every single day. That's crazy. Why wouldn't you be in that, in that platform? Right. Um, <clears throat> but then, you know, you have the wealth management and, and we have a few celebrities that sponsoring us. We have football players, NFL alumni that we have gotten together to work a program called uh, Life After, which mm. is showing athletes how to put enough money away and where to put it so that when they walk off the field or off that court, they're not going broke within five years. And that's what's been happening. So we have a few alumni that's pulling that together right now. Uh, and then we have a HBCU program that allows uh, individuals to be able to give back to their school, um, mm -hmm. you know, con to, to continuously, you know, yes. through an IUL product. That's so good. I love that. Life after what a great freaking name too! <laughs> like it, it explains it perfectly. <laughs> uh, life after. That's yeah. Right. There is a life after this, you know, athletic period of your life. Yeah. That's, that's right. freaking awesome, dude. That's so good. Uh, and talk about like, the importance of, um, like, I feel like, so I feel like there's a lot of agents out there that like the idea of selling IULs mm -hmm. and, and they understand that there's, there's money to be made and you can help a lot of people and you can do some special stuff and help create generational wealth, et cetera. W what's the attraction and like ex explanation to an agent of like, you know, can an agent just get information and learn it and figure it out because I think a lot of agents are, are overwhelmed by the concept just because they don't understand it so that they just then they don't research it or move in that direction at all. Yeah, it can be tough. I mean, you, you have to find, a, 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 again, a system, a program, uh, a mentor. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to, to have the greatest mentors here uh, on board with us, our VPs, um, Robert Shakely, uh, Rich Burchill. These guys, uh, I think Bob has been, oh gosh, he's been in the industry like 37 years, right? And wow. doing nothing but wealth management. So he's great when it comes to estate planning and trust and things like Ooh. that. So um, key man policies. And so every agent that come in with us, if they, whether they're in the final expense market or wealth, if they run across a case that they're not too sure about, they simply say, hey, uh, let me set you up a call, a Zoom call with uh, one, of my, one of my partners from the wealth management division. And, you know, they can talk to you because they may not know, right? They don't know what to say, but you have these guys that's been around the block a long time, know exactly what to say, how to say it. And, um, and, and you know, they're going to help you close that deal from, from the start to the finish. And, you know, you have to tag on to someone who knows what they're doing. So our mentors are there, you know, they'll take the phone call, they'll, they'll give you cell numbers, they'll give you email addresses and say, hey, call me if you have anything. And Rich Burchill, he's our uh, CPA. Because a lot of times when you, if you're getting big cases done, a lot of clients will say, well, I need to run this through my CPA. Well, guess what? We've already did that. We have a CPA that's on our board. Mm. You know, that we run those deals, those bigger deals through him to make sure that for tax benefits and everything is set up properly. So, that's but it, it, can, it can be scary if you don't know what you're doing, but yeah. you just gotta make sure that you tap into somebody who does. I like that you're getting creative and thinking about ways to take 
objections off the table or overcome them along the way when you can, you know, um, yeah. like having a CPA on the board to like vet stuff. Like that's really freaking smart. Like that's forward thinking. Most people are like trying to scramble and figure stuff stuff out after, you know, you're trying to figure it out before. Um, what are some other things that like are advice wise that you would say, okay, here's what agents that are new are struggling in this space. Here's what they need to know. Um, I would say first and foremost is, you know, learn how to find the right mentor because the longer it takes you to get off the ground, mm -hmm. someone's affected by that. You True. know, you have, you have children that's waiting on you to bring in the, bring in some money, you know, and they want to go to Disney world. They want to do these things. So you're affecting them if you're following the wrong people. Um, and one key point, and, and I teach this in my live Q and a, is you know sit down with your mentor your direct mentor and don't be afraid to ask them you know how long have you been with the company because a lot of people do these contracts and and you know get signed up and just you know okay i'm ready to go make money mm -hmm. and th then they finally realize down the road that my direct mentor he's only been doing this for a year or my direct mentor is doing it part-time is that who you really want to follow you know, if, if, if I bring Cody in with me, I'm going to ask, you know, what kind of money you want to make. But I want you to ask me, well, what did you make last year? Mm -hmm. That's important, right? Yes. We're in the industry that, you know, you can make as much as you want to make. And so it needs to be something impressive. So if Cody asked me and said, well, what did you make last year in income? If I can't answer like that, Cody, you need to run. Mm. You know, somebody that's going to be a, a, a transparent with you and say, well, let me show you my 1099. This is what I made last year. Yes. The last five years, you know, so we teach agents the right questions that need to be asked when they go on an interview. And some people already did the contract, but it's not too late to say, hey, you know what? Let me pick up the phone and call my mentor and ask him these six questions. And one of them is, what did you make last year in income? What is your monthly residual right now? How long does it take to me? To, how long does it take for me to become vested with your company? Mm. Well, if you're brand new, you may not even know what vested means. So let me just give that one little tip right now what it means. There's a lot of companies that say they're not vet, you're not vested for two years. Some is five years, some is 10 years, and some is never. So what the question I always ask is, if you've been grinding and hustling out there in the street, writing all these policies, and you're trying to build residual income, and you built your income up to be $3,000 a month coming in, residual before you get up out of the bed. And God forbid, but you pass away. Do you want that $3,000 to continue to go to your children? Or would you rather it go back to the company? Every person says, to my children. Yes. So why would you sign a contract that does not allow you to be vested? Because mm. vested simply means that if I leave the company, if I die, that's generational wealth. It keeps coming in as long as it stays on the books. Yes. So why sign a contract that you got to wait two, five, ten years or never invested? Makes no sense, does it? No, that's good, though, man. That's so good. I love the transparency. I love it. Also, your passion picked up. When you started talking about that, like you could, you guys could feel it through the camera. Eric was getting <laughs> excited, man. But he loves it. Like he believes in it. it. He's it. passionate for it. Um, first generation life. Dude, I love what you're doing. I'm excited. I want to keep... Um, chatting. I want to have you on again. Um, give your number out again, uh, you know, or website or whatever. If they're like, dude, I like Eric. I like what he's doing. I have some questions and I want to reach out and figure out what the heck is going on over there. Love to talk to anybody about this business. Um, it's, it's again, it's afforded me to do a lot, uh, put kids mm -hmm. through college and uh, take the trips we wanted to take, you know, buying land, real estate, you name it. So this is this is a very, very lucrative business if you do it right. Yeah. Um, but anyone can reach out to me. My, my, again, my cell number is area code 336-512-3754. Our website is www.firstgenlife.com. And that's spelled out. First Gen, short for generation, life. Firstgenlife.com. I love that. I love the name. I love the URL. I love that you're giving out your cell phone. I love that you're being transparent. And I love that you're hanging out with us today on the channel, dude. Appreciate your time. We got to do it again. That's right, man. Thank you for being on here, brother. Appreciate you yeah, very sir. much.
Appreciate you, Cody. Hey, give Derek Howard some love. Thank him for being on the podcast and the channel. Definitely reach out and shoot him a text. Learn from him and everything he's doing. So you too can create some generational wealth with First Gen Life. Thanks for listening to the podcast, and we'll see you on the next podcast episode. Adios. Thanks, guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Okay, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.